In today's morning rounds, we're focusing on Mental Health Awareness Month, which starts today. A new study out this morning in the Journal of Pediatrics finds the number of suicides between 2000 and 2018 by self-poisoning, mainly through overdoses, has soared, especially among teenage girls. The American Psychiatric Association says one out of every six people will suffer from depression at some point in their lives. CBS News contributors, psychologist Lisa Damore and Dr. David Agus join us. This is such an important conversation, but I have to ask Lisa, just even on the basics, mm -hmm. I mean, teenagers are known to be very secretive. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is it that you parse if someone is just kind of feeling the blues versus being clinically depressed and needing to go get help? Sure, sure. So the way we want to think about this is that mental health is like physical health. Mentally healthy people get sick, they, they get down, they feel sad, and they recover in the same way that physically healthy people get sick and recover. What we worry about is when people become upset and they stay down and they cannot pull themselves out of it in the same way we would know someone was really in trouble physically if they became ill and got iller and iller. Mm -hmm. David, how difficult is it to diagnose or measure mental health to begin with? It is one of the greatest problems I see is that this amazing organ, you know, mental health is a big issue, but the greatest technology I have to know whether you have mental health is four words, how do you feel? Mm. We have no way of actually measuring the brain. The next frontier over the next decade will be figuring out actually how to quantify and, and measure the brain. Mm -hmm. There are standardized questionnaires and ways doctors do it today, and we have treatments that work, but actually measuring the brain is gonna be wild and what it can do for us. And such a spectrum too of mental health. No question, yeah, we bucketize things now. Right. But you're depressed, you're this, you're that. There are probably gradations. There's a spectrum of each of these disorders. And when you measure things, you have an optimization parameter. And Lisa, picking up on that, mental there is a, still a stigma about mental health. We don't have our kids go to have a mental health checkup right. the way we have them go get a physical, even though there's nothing wrong with them when they right. go to have their physical. So talk about that a little bit. Well, so the problem with mental health is that it really, it's how you feel and how you're thinking. And so when people's feelings and thinking isn't what they want it to be, they have the sense that they should be able to pull themselves out of it, to sort of shake it off. And the problem with clinical depression is you can't shake that off any more than you could shake off a broken leg. And so we have a lot of work to do to help people understand that depression is an illness in the same way that pneumonia is an illness. And just as we can treat pneumonia, we can treat depression. And so, doctor, how do we treat it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Nice alley I just have this yeah. thing about shaking off a broken leg. It's yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you just can't do it. Yeah. You just yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Can't do yeah. that so, song. you know, there's this simple notion we say, well, it's a chemical imbalance in the brain, which is totally wrong, right? Certainly, neurochemicals, these molecules in the brain, do control how we feel, our emotions, and how we respond to things. The drugs we have, they work. They change some of these chemicals. But it's not that simple. Most of these drugs take weeks to a month to work. So it's not just giving a chemical, it may be creating new neuronal connections. We don't understand necessarily how all of these work, but they work. Psychotherapy, medications work. Avoidance, people with medical problems, whether it be low thyroid or heart disease, higher depression. When you don't sleep, depression goes up. When you're indoors, we call it seasonal affective disorder, there's not a lot of sunlight, depression goes up. So address the things that are addressable, discuss it with your doctor, and talk about potential treatments if it's appropriate. Why is this such an acute problem, though, among teenagers, and particularly teenage girls? I mean, how much of just fitness can there be to avoid this? Well, one thing we want to be clear about is that teenage girls, and this has been true for a long time, of girls and women, are more likely to attempt suicide. Boys and men are more likely to complete suicide. Why so, is that? Um, they tend to use more lethal methods. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is um, more attempts among girls and women, but more completion among boys and men. And so the rates actually can be a little bit confusing in that way. We don't actually know what accounts for the spike. It's very hard for us to make sort of clear causal um, assumptions here. The thing you said about sleep, though, is one thing that we're really starting to worry about. We are watching sleep levels decline. I'm pro-sleep, by the way. I'm all for sleep, I'm all for sleep. Mm -hmm. But we're watching sleep levels decline. And when people sleep less, depression goes up, and when depression goes up, suicide goes up. 
So. Wait, not good. I have to take that in for a second. When yeah. you think about the job, the hours yes. that we have yes. and the job we have, yes, and also sleep the, is so important. And the pressures on kids and the, exactly. and the phones that keep them awake at night yes. to keep them from sleeping. We have an entire new generation that has yeah. grown up with the screen that is affecting the wiring of the brain. That blue light, your brain mm -hmm. says, hey, that's daytime. Mm -hmm. And it changes how we think and how we're wired. We don't know the implications of what's going to come from that. Yeah, you got to have, you, you have to have the conversation, a difficult conversation. We're going to put this on a loop about in my house. Mm -hmm. But I love you that you're wearing green for yeah. a mental health night. I didn't Both know of you, that. it's great. I'm glad we're wearing green today. I know.